Hi YouTube, um, this is going to be a video on potty training. I think I'm going to do kind of a little series on it, and this is going to be my first video, and this is kind of just, sorry, an introduction, because I have not started potty training yet. What I have been doing is kind of preparing myself for potty training. And I guess I'll start off by just going into the reasons why I'm doing this. Daisy is 22 months old, and uh, I just, over the last six months, she, and even before that, she was showing signs of interest in potty training, and it was something that I held off on. Not because I didn't think she could do it, but because of circumstances as far as her being in school and they don't potty train in the one to two classroom so that was out of the question and um they just not having that one-on-one -on -one time and just the convenience of it but now that she's 22 months old she's showing more signs of readiness and I feel like at this point I'm doing her a disservice by not trying and so I've been reading up on different potty training philosophies and different approaches and the approach that I am going to go with is an approach by Lois Clint K-L-E-I-N-T I'll put the link to her book below but I um, I bought this book and it is Potty Train in Three Days and I know it sound, it seems like one of those titles like I've seen on Pinterest like Potty Train Your Child in One Day but this method actually makes sense and it's not a method that's saying by the end of these three days your child's going to be potty trained. The basic philosophy in this method is that you spend three days completely 100% devoted to your child potty training, which means you don't leave your child's side for three full days. And you basically, at the beginning of the first day, you get rid of all the diapers, and that's it. I'll get to that part because I'm a little nervous <laughs> about that, but um, obviously I'm not going to get rid of my diapers. I'm pregnant and we cloth diaper, but the symbolic getting rid of the diapers um, you get rid of the diapers at the beginning of the first day, and then that's that's it. And there's some preparation you do with your child a few days beforehand as far as letting them play with the potty and introducing the, the concept of potty training, getting underwear, um, all of those things. But uh, the first day, that's it. It's... Um, it's to the potty and you give your child that confidence that they can do it by not by not having the diapers as a reserve or pull-ups to make them think that they can't do it. Which I totally believe in the power of positive thinking and especially in children like they pick up on that any hesitation you have and they're right there. So that's kind of what drew me to this method. And uh, so from from the first day, like the first day I guess is kind of just that getting a routine set where you take your child every 30 minutes or every hour or every 45 minutes, whatever that your child needs, um, just to set that routine. And by setting the groundwork for a toileting routine, you're setting your child up for success. And I like that this method does not um, punish or discourage the child when they do have potty accidents, especially in those first uh, three days, but just focuses on the success that you want your child to feel and you want your child to embrace their, their successes and not their disappointments. So that's kind of just like what that first day looks like and then I guess the second day you do the same thing modifying the schedule accordingly to what you saw your child do the day before and by the third day by the end of the third day you should be seeing your child starting to get into that routine that you've set for them 
And all the while, throughout these three days, you're practicing elimination communication with your child because you're right there with them. You see the faces that they make, the body language that they show when they're having an accident. And so all that time you're setting them up for success by trying to avoid those accidents and getting them to the potty so that they make that connection. So that's what I really like about this main method. And, um, and then after those three days, it doesn't stop. You continue with the schedule, especially if you have a child under the age of two and a half who may not be able to mentally remind themselves. You still take your child to the bathroom, but at that point they should be able to you know, pull their pants up and down and sit themselves on the potty and things like that. Uh, I can go over some signs of readiness that this book has. Daisy shows almost all of these signs. Um, trying to take off wet or soiled diapers, wanting to wear underwear instead of diapers, wanting to sit on the potty, showing interest in watching other people go to the bathroom, showing awareness that they are themselves going to the bathroom, and informing you um, when they have a wet or soiled diaper. The one thing that Daisy doesn't do is wake up dry after a nap or nighttime sleep. And that's the one thing that has concerned me. But after reading through this book, and it is a really short read. I read it in like 45 minutes. So it's not like <laughs> one of those things that takes a, it's not a really long read. And it's not an expensive read, so I totally suggest it. But uh, after reading through the book, one of the stipulations to really following through on this method is that you do take away those diapers 100% and that you don't have diapers for long road trips or nap time and nighttime diapers. And that's the one thing I'm a little concerned about. I'm not so much cleaning up messes. I don't mind that. Um, I know it's part of the process and I'm totally prepared for that. It's more just, I don't know if Daisy's physically capable of staying dry all night. And uh, cause she wakes up with a soaking wet diaper. But one of the things it does say in this book is that if you set your child up to wet themselves, they will. So if you set your child up with a diaper, they're going to fulfill that and wet themselves. If you, you know, set out a change of clothes before nap time because you expect them to wet themselves, they will live up to that and they will wet themselves. But if you give them positive affirmations that, you know, you can stay dry throughout the night and uh, you can do this and, you know, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna keep your underwear dry and, you know, you give them like a little potty inside their room and you help wake them up when you know that they're normally wetting to get them to the potty. Uh, you don't let them oversleep, things like that, that they will they will live up to that. And so a part of me <laughs> thinks that Daisy could do it. Um, the other part of me is really nervous about that. So I'm still having this mental and emotional dilemma of the whole sleep trained, sleep potty trained. I've, I've seen both ends of it working in childcare settings. I've seen the you know, 24 month old who <laughs> can stay dry all nap and, you know, it's, I know it's possible, but at the same time, I've seen the other end where, you know, you have a four year old who wets themselves every nap, but I also see the factors involved in that where, you know, the four year old is given a pull up at every nap time because everybody expects them to wet themselves and whereas the 24 month old who doesn't is left in their underwear. And so if they do have an accident, they have an accident. And so I don't know, uh, that's kind of where I'm at as far as <laughs> that goes really quick. I want to share with you guys some things that I'm doing currently to prepare. I have prepared myself as far as like getting the equipment that I need. And the first thing that I got, and I actually got this right uh, after Daisy turned one, and so we've had this potty chair for almost a year, so she's very familiar with it. And it is the Baby Bjorn. 
and I really like this potty chair for a few reasons. Here, I'm going to scoot back so you guys can see it a little bit better. It's very stable, and so she can't really rock it. She can't tip it. It's got a high back, so when she was really little and she would lean back, you know how little ones, like, they arch their backs? She wouldn't fall off. <laughs> um, some things I don't like about it, the seat comes out really easily, um, which isn't a big deal. Sometimes when she stands up, if she's been sitting on it or it's, like, humid for some reason in the house, her butt will stick to it and it'll kind of pull the seat up a little bit. But that's never been a huge issue. Um, when she plays potty, um, sometimes she takes it out. But um, and that's completely normal, so I'm not super concerned with that. Overall, I'm very happy with our potty chair and I think it'll, it'll serve its purpose as her main potty in our bathroom. Other things that I have gotten to kind of equip us, I got a ring for the toilet because Recently, she has wanted to sit on our toilet, and she's not really stable enough to hold herself up. So I got an Arm & Hammer little ring. It's plastic. It's not cushioned or anything like that. But I like that it handles. And um, the deodorizer actually drives me crazy. It's super strong smelling. So I don't, I'm don't. i not like a super fan of that. I did have to modify it <laughs> by taking some Cutco scissors. <laughs> and cutting off like it normally has a, like a ring that goes all the way but I guess our toilet is exceptionally tiny because it's supposed to fit all standard toilets so all I did was take some Cutco scissors and cut off that back ring part and it actually stays perfectly because these catch the lip of the toilet so our toilet is about this wide instead of the average that wide so yeah I really like our toilet ring Daisy likes it as well and then I got one more tiny toilet, same brand, Baby Bjorn, for her bedroom. And this is kind of where the route I think I'm going to go if I decide to just throw it all in and take the, even the nighttime diapers away. I want her to have a toilet that she can access in the middle of the night, in the dark. She'll know where it is. It'll always be there. And I wanted something small that could fit in the bottom of our stroller one that could I could just throw in the trunk of our car that we could take anywhere that wouldn't be super cumbersome until she feels fully comfortable with public toilets once she does I I got this it is a travel toilet seat and what is the brand Primo what it says and it's just a little toilet seat that folds out like this. Had really good reviews and I think it'll do the job once she feels confident. But until then we have the little one. And yeah, that is kind of the main equipment preparation aside from getting underwear, which I did. And um, I also got her a book special for the bathroom for the first like three days. And it's the Once Upon a Potty Girl. And I wanted to do that just because she has a ton of potty books, but she's she's pretty familiar with all of them, and they're getting boring to her. So I wanted her to have a potty book where the little girl is going through the same thing that she's going through currently, where she's not wearing diapers anymore, and she's having accidents, and it's okay, and all of that. So it's like a probably a five-minute read, which is perfect because... Uh, she shouldn't be sitting on the potty for more than five minutes anyway during that like first three days and whatnot. So yeah, that is it and I will update you guys once we've started the process. I'll probably make a vlog every day for the first three days at least and then kind of uh, a final thing maybe like a week or two after. Alright, thanks for watching.